In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Welcome to our Sunday Eucharist on this, the last Sunday of Advent, when we celebrate the Feast of Christ the King. So we say together the prayer of preparation. Almighty God, God, to to whom whom all hearts are open, all all desires desires known, and and from from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Christ calls us to share the heavenly banquet of his love with all the saints in earth and heaven. Knowing our unworthiness and sin, let us ask from him both mercy and forgiveness. Lord, you are gracious and compassionate. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord, have have mercy. mercy. You are loving to all and your mercy is over all your creation. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ, have have mercy. Your faithful servants bless your name and speak of the glory of your kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord, have have mercy. mercy. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. We say together the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest, and and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. God the Father, help us to hear the call of Christ the King and to follow in his service, whose kingdom has no end. For he reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, one glory. Amen. Amen. The first reading is taken from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Chapter 34, beginning at the 11th verse. For thus says the Lord God, I myself will search out for my sheep and will seek them out. As shepherds seek out their flocks when they are among their scattered sheep, so I will seek my sheep. I will rescue them from all the places to which they have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries and will bring them into their own land and I will feed them on the mountains of Israel by the water courses and in the inhabited parts of the land. I will feed them with good pasture and the mountain heights of Israel shall be their pasture. There they shall lie down in good grazing land and they shall feed on rich pasture on the mountain of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep And I will make them lie down, says the Lord God. I will seek the lost, and I will bring back the strayed, and I will bind up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak. But the fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them with justice. Therefore, thus says the Lord God to them, I myself will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep because you pushed with flank and shoulder and butted at all the weak animals with your horns until you scattered them far and wide. 
I will save my flock, and they shall no longer be ravaged, and I will judge between sheep and sheep. I will set up over them one shepherd, my servant David, and he shall feed them. He shall feed them and be their shepherd, and I, the Lord, will be their God, and my servant David shall be prince among them. I, the Lord, have spoken. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Second lesson is taken from the epistle to the Ephesians, chapter 1, beginning at the 15th verse. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love towards all the saints, and for this reason I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that, with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe according to the working of his great power. God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead, and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet, and has made him the head over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him, who fills all in all. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Alleluia, alleluia. Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest heaven. Alleluia. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him. And he will separate people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep at his right hand and the goats at his left. Then the king will come to those at his right hand. Come, you that are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food, or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. Then he will say to those at his left hand, You that are accursed, depart from me into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me. Naked, and you did not give me clothing. Sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not take care of you? Then he will answer them, 
Truly, I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May I speak in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, this is the feast of uh, Christ the King. And when they nailed the sign onto the cross, it was meant as a, a joke. And in a gruesome way, it must have seemed quite funny at the time. Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews, proclaimed in Hebrew and Greek and Latin all the languages that mattered in that place at that time. This great king, so-called, hung on a cross of criminals, his body slowly suffocating under its own weight, his royal hands and feet fixed steel by simple nails hammered into rough cut wood. Soon he would be dead and all that king nonsense would be over once and for all. And in a few years, well, even his disciples might start to find it uh, a little amusing. The king of the Jews, no less. Whatever became of him? But that was Good Friday. That was only part of the story. And on Easter morning, the joke of the sign became laughable itself as the next glorious bit of Jesus' story dawned. And today, at the end of the church year, uh, we celebrate Christ the King and thereby proclaim the very end of Jesus' story and ours. We proclaim Christ as King because we recognise that his worldly failure, his defeat and humiliation was also his eternal, universal triumph. That's why the symbol of Christ's kingship is not a crown, it is a cross. And when they tried uh, to make Jesus a worldly king, and wouldn't you like to do that too, I would, when he was asked if he was a king, he withdrew or failed to give uh, the expected answer. Now he was and is a king, of course, but a king who rejects the crown and takes up the cross. And by that cross, we proclaim with the Apostle Paul that Christ is king of the universe and sat at the right hand of the Father, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. The Father has put all things under his feet and has made him the head over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. Now, if we hear that majesty and triumph as an excuse to revel in triumphalism, the battle is already won, hooray for us, or to rest on our laurels, the salvation of the world is assured, then we have sadly missed the point of all this. The right response is worship, humility, service, compassion. The right response comes from trying to live out everything at Christ's cross signifies self-giving, obedience, faith, certainty in the final triumph of love. This is why, even in a time of crisis and pandemic, Christians can be people of hope. We can be salt and we can be light, even when we are facing our own desperate troubles. Now perhaps you are witnessing much of the previous certainty and, and stability in your life uh, becoming like a morning mist under a hot sun, gradually dissipating. The worldly kings and leaders who rely on brute power, on influence, on uh, economic good fortune, on coercion and sometimes violence, uh, falter. There is one king who can console us 
when we face uncertainty and mourning and illness, when we face depression and stress, financial struggles, unemployment, isolation. That is the king who took all those things, those failures and humiliations by the world's standards, up with him onto the cross. He took them into himself and there at Golgotha they were crucified in him. In his resurrection, their power was removed. In his ascension to the Father's right hand, his complete lordship over them was made clear. Here is the only king or leader worthy of the name Saviour, the one who saves if we are treating our worldly leaders, no, wonder, no, no, no matter how wonderful they are, if we're treating our worldly leaders as saviours, we've missed the point. This risen, ascended, glorified Christ, the King, uh, doesn't give us something material to aspire to or status to crave, like worldly uh, power or privilege or comfort or fame. Uh, we cannot socially climb ourselves or bootstrap ourselves until we are saviours of the world. And nor does this king, uh, Christ the king, rule from a regal distance. Uh, Jesus' Balmoral is actually your heart, and your soul is Jesus' Sandringham. That is where he lives. He is simultaneously at God the Father's right hand, and right beside us, right beside you, with us now in all things, including our difficulties and our failures. He brings us to God the Father and pleads on our behalf. He calls us friends. So today, whisper into the ear of Christ the King, the Lord of the universe who happens to be uh, sat beside you, resident in your heart. Pray. Tell him, your fears and your worries and tell him your joys as you would tell them to a friend. Meditate on him. Fashion your life on him. Live in his hope, living out a care, a gentleness, bravery, compassion and a love that honours him and draws others to him. In that, you praise and worship him. Christ is a king, not like military conquerors or those who gain their way to power or influence. He's not like the successful and powerful and famous by our world standards. Rather, Christ is the king for broken people, for dysfunctional and struggling nations, for the failures, for a world crippled by pandemic and violence and injustice and a loss of truth. Christ is the King who will heal and bind up and restore and reconcile, who by rejecting a worldly crown and taking up a cross has won salvation for the world and the promise of peace and love beyond our understanding. May we and our broken world learn to reject the crown of worldly power and take up his cross too. The Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hands are the depths of the earth. The heights of the mountains are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and the dry land which his hands have formed O oh, come, let us worship and bow down, let us kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, the sheep of his hand.
let us affirm our faith in the words of the Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us with confidence present our prayers and supplications to the throne of grace. At the end of each section, the response is, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for the world that, inspired by your kingship, all those in positions of power may govern with wisdom and integrity, truly serving the needs of their people. May your reign come. Lord, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. We pray for the church, the sign of your reign that your welcome will be extended to all people of every race and background. May your kingdom come. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for Christians of all denominations, that together we may grow in understanding of the royal priesthood you bestowed on us in baptism. May your dominion come. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for this community of faith, that attentive to your word, we may always worship in spirit and in truth. May your reign come. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the sick of this parish and beyond, and those on our own hearts, naming those who have asked for our prayers. Paul Elms, Jill Farley, Christine Ross, Jan Buckley, Tony Gurney, Keith Newton, Peter Hazelwood, Doreen Mays, Sheila Cook, Carol Durrant, Joan Smith, Graham Clayton, Tony Rose, Margaret Shepherd, Ashley Hanmer, Wynne Kenway, Fred and Ernest Jenkins, Frieda and Ernest Jenkins, Roy Harrison, Barry Chaplin, John Brown, Maya Hahn, Barbara Center, Doug Brown, John Barker, Hilary Goodyear, Maureen Yates, Graham Brown, Pam Hatherley, Florence Wheat, Erin Sadler, Angus, Chris, Derek Green and Rosemary. To them and to those who love and care for them, may your comfort and healing come. Lord, hear Amen. our prayer. We pray for those who have died and those who mourn them. For Peter Youngs, Kathy Pugh, Barbara Underwood, and Tony Christie. To all who mourn and miss a loved one, may your peace come. Lord, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Loving God, you have taught us that the power of the heart is greater than the power of wealth and might. Hear us as we pray for the fulfilment of your reign. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our King. To him be glory and power forever. Amen. Amen.
To crown all things, there must be love, to bind all together and complete the whole. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let's offer one another a sign of peace. Peace be with you, Beth. Peace be with peace you. Peace be with you at home. Peace be with you. Water and this wine, we come to share the divinity of Christ who humbled himself to share our will. To you we come, Father of lights, with angels and saints, where heaven and earth unite. May Jesus meet us in the breaking of the bread. Amen. The Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift, lift them, them to the, the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right Let to give, give thanks, thanks and, and praise. praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should always sing of your glory, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. For you are the hope of the nations, the builder of the city that is to come. Your love made visible in Jesus Christ brings home the lost, restores the sinner, and gives dignity to the despised. In his face your light shines out, flooding lives with goodness and truth, gathering into one in your kingdom a divided and broken humanity. Therefore, with all who can give voice in your creation, we glorify your name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God of power Lord. and might, heaven, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends. And taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them, and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again, he praised you, gave it to them, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation, we proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people, Gather us in your loving arms and bring us with all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. God's holy gifts for God's holy people. Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ is holy. Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ is Lord. Lord. To the, the glory, glory of God, God the Father. We join together to say this prayer of spiritual communion. Thanks, Thanks be to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, Christ for, all for all the benefits, benefits you have given me, all, all the pains and insults you have borne for me. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart. O most merciful Redeemer, friend and brother, may I know you more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly, day by day. Amen. Stir up, O Lord, the wills of your faithful people, that they, plenteously bringing forth the fruit of good works, may by you be plenteously rewarded, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, in these days of mercy, make us quiet and prayerful. In these days of challenge, make us stronger in you. In these days of emptiness, take possession of us. In these days of waiting, Open our hearts to the mystery of your cross. Amen. As uh, Viv mentioned, the new uh, church year begins next Sunday uh, with Advent Sunday. We'll still be under the national restrictions at that time but a team of very talented people, including Viv, have put together uh, an Advent carol service that will be shown through uh, Facebook and uh, YouTube that evening. And actually beginning this week, this uh, Wednesday, uh, we have a series of Advent reflections with uh, Compline. I believe the first one has been put together uh, by uh, Rosemary Eldon, and again, you'll be able to find that on our Facebook uh, feed at, I think, 7.30 uh, p.m. 
If you're uh, watching this, it means you have uh, access to uh, the internet or you've broken into my house and stolen my iPhone. Uh, either way, I would encourage you to make sure that you are receiving our worship emails that tell you uh, what our online worship arrangements uh, are. Uh, they are also posted, of course, through Twitter and uh, on uh, Facebook. But uh, if you think that you're not receiving them and you would like to receive them, please just send an email to admin at stleonardslexton.org.uk. Uh, and in my new catchphrase, that's stleonardslexton.org.uk. Later on uh, this evening, uh, there'll be a thought from the Reverend uh, Maggie Whiteman, further exploration of uh, Christ at the King, which I hope will bring you uh, some hope and joy. May God, who kindled the fire of his love in the hearts of the saints, pour upon you the riches of his grace and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.